Welcome to the Grove City Area Historical Society and Museum. We just this year changed our name. We used to be the Grove City Area Historical Society. We added the word museum because we have a museum. We were notified a couple of years ago that we are one of the top 30 historical entities in the United States. We did not apply for this. We don't know how we got it. but. We received this designation for three reasons. One, we have a museum. Two, we give genealogical advice if people wish to uh, search their family tree. And three, we have written books to educate the community about our history. I asked the question, what are the other 29 entities, if we're one of 30? Uh, Greenfield Village, outside Detroit, Michigan, Plymouth Plantation, Monticello, Colonial Williamsburg. So we're in some pretty sophisticated companies. So we're very proud of this. Uh, we have a nice museum. Everything in this museum has been donated except one item. And as you go through the building and see everything that is here, it's mind boggling. Not only is everything donated, but everything is recorded. I have a book. Everything is entered into the computer. And we have a hard copy that tells everything about the item. It's also on the computer. And not only do we have a copy of this here, we have a copy off-site. Because if anything ever happened to this building, we have a record of it. Because nobody would remember everything that's here. There's a dress upstairs. Maybe we'll get a picture of it that was donated and I looked up the history of it that we have and it was uh, donated by Mr. and Mrs. Leo Feld and it's a silk matron of honor dress and it was made from the groom's parachute. I think of everything in the historical society, that's my favorite thing. <laughs> One of the newest things that we have is a fundraiser that we think is pretty neat. Uh, somebody wanted to make a donation in one of our members' honor. And so we tried to think, how could we display a donation that everybody could see? We came up with the idea, Lillian Rear, who's one of our members, and the author of our books and an artist, drew this tree, and then the leaves are, of course, from Wendell August, and for a hundred, five hundred, or a thousand dollars, you can have a name put on a leaf. This is, uh, we have raised over sixteen thousand dollars selling these leaves. It's really been a good uh, adventure. We listed the original directors. These are the people who first expressed an interest. I was the president, Mike Adams was vice president, Joan Foster, Eleanor Kuvert, and Ellie Kendall were the first board members. And then Chester Young, John Hummel, Mike Coulter, Tom Armour, Ann Dayton, and Barb Howard. The criteria was we had to have a representative from each township, some members at large, and from Grove City Borough. So this is our first board, which we felt should be memorialized. Ray Morley, Bill McTaggart, Connie Blakely, Chuck Bestwick, Sue Stam, and Bonnie Adams. So that's uh, the first group that got this started. <laughs> probably 40 or 50. We are open uh, Tuesday through Saturday from 12 to 3 and we like to have at least two people here. 
so that if somebody is taking someone around the building, there's still somebody down here. Uh, there's lots of things here that could be picked up and and walk out the door and we don't want that to happen. So we make sure that we always have one person down here and then somebody else who might be taking people around. How long has the historical society been open for? We were given this building in January 2000. Grove City Borough made a donation. The clock that is chiming was the clock that, that hung in Leesburg School. And the man who was the head custodian, when they closed the school, got the clock, refurbished it, and now we have it in the Historical Society. Everything here has a story, and that's the story behind the clock. But we, we uh, actually were founded in 1998. I was the first president of the organization and I took the presidency for one year because I knew we had organizational things that had to be done. We had to get our articles of incorporation, we had to get our tax exempt status, and we had to find a home. So I took the presidency for one year, we accomplished those things, and then we turned it over to somebody else. The first members were a group that started meeting during the bicentennial. Grove City's 200th anniversary was in 1998. And at that time, people started thinking about things they had in their basements, their attics, and digging things out and bringing to the bicentennial headquarters. We had no, no room to take anything. We were in a rented building. So a group of us started meeting to talk about forming an historical society. And it was Bonnie and Glenn and Mike Adams, uh, John and Marge Hummel, Tom and Lois Armour, myself, Miff and Madeline McBride, all names from the town. And after about six months of meeting, we decided to hold a public meeting and see if there was anyone else in the town interested in forming an historical society. And about 35 people came. And from that group, we got our first board and that's how we got organized. What's your favorite room in the museum? My favorite room in the museum is actually the room that's dedicated to my husband. Uh, it's the aluminum room. He loved the old hammered aluminum from Wendell August. And so uh, the room downstairs uh, was financed by memorial contributions in his memory and that's my favorite. Is the rumor about the museum being the certified haunted house true? Well, if you believe in the paranormal, I guess it is true. We are, yes, a certified haunted building. The first year we were here, the eighth grade students came to visit, and as I said, it was a scary place. And one of the girls said, is the building haunted? And I said, oh, I don't think so. But I'll ask the former owner. So I called Mrs. Trapasso, and I said, are there ghosts in the building? She said, oh my, yes, which wasn't the answer I expected. And she said when she would be doing the laundry in the basement, that a shadow would come out of one room and walk around. And she said at first it really scared her. And then she said she'd just shoo it away and, and he'd just wander around and didn't bother anything. That story got around. And we received a call from the Northwest Haunting Association and ask if they could come and set up audio and visual equipment and look, try and make contact with the ghosts. So we said yes, they could, providing they come back and tell us if they found anything. They made contact with a little four-year-old girl and we heard the conversation and it was, um, are you a boy or girl? A girl. Do you have any sisters or brothers? Yes, a brother. How old are you? Four. Now that story ties in with another story. The man that grew up here, Johnny Trapasso, was a father and brought his little boy here. And his little boy was running around and playing and Johnny finally said, come on Alec, we have to leave. And Alec said, well, let me say goodbye to my friend. And they said, what friend? Well, the little girl I'm talking to. 
and there was no little girl here. So he left. That story was in the Allied News. And somebody called in and said that they had lived here and that they had seen that little girl many times. So the Northwest Hauntings Association came several times. Then we had a call from the Steel Town Paranormal Group. And they came. And you have to understand, that come at night. So we had to notify the police if they saw anyone in the building. It was legit. It was OK. The Steel Town Group told us that this was the most, one of the most active sites they had ever been to. That there had been more paranormal experiences than any other place. And the, the man who was head of it said he was actually frightened one time. He was downstairs and all of a the sudden there was a presence right in front of him. And he'd back up and this presence would back up, would follow him. And he said that's really the only time he had been frightened. The last time they came was two years ago on Halloween. And very little happened. They had very little interaction. And they said the more organized a place becomes, the less active the spirits are. So we are gradually getting our act together in this place. And so the, uh, apparently the paranormal uh, entities are not active. Whether they like what we've done or just have moved on elsewhere, we don't know. But we've all had experiences. I was in the window decorating one time, and I walked across the window and I ran into something. And there was nothing there. We've had things fall on the floor. Uh, we've had the toilet flush. We've had things fall off the wall. Uh, chairs have moved. So there's lots of stories. Why did you decide to be involved? I was part of the Bicentennial Committee. And it just kind of evolved from there. I, I became the first president. And this is a true story. We had a nominating committee. And I was the only one that showed up for the meeting. So I made myself the first president with the idea that I would do it for one year, get the organizational things done, and then move on. And that's what I did. What is the main purpose of the Historical Society? Our, our motto is that we preserve the history, heritage, and supporting artifacts of the Grove City area. Now that means everything that encompasses the Grove City School District. Grove City Borough, Pine, Liberty, Springfield, and Wolf, Wolf Creek Township. Anything that is brought in from another area, we thank the people for thinking of us and ask them to take it there. We are bursting at the seams with just Grove City stuff, so we can't take anything from anywhere else. How many volunteers are here? Probably 40 or 50. We are open Tuesday through Saturday. The area of where the post office sits is interesting. There was a big house that sat where the post office is. Here's a picture of the house. The house was built in 1898, and the man that built it, his name was McConkey, had saved wood for many years, and even though there weren't sewers and water in the town, he put bathrooms and all the plumbing in the house so that when the sewers came in and the public water, all he had to do was make the connections and he was set to go. In 1932, the government came to him and said they wanted to build a post office, and his house was right in the middle of town. Could they buy his house? Because they wanted the post office in the middle of town. Well, of course, he asked, what are you going to do with the house? Well, we'll tear the house down. And he said, no, no, you're not tearing this house down. So they negotiated, and the agreement that they came to was that the government would get the land, and he would keep the house. And so on Memorial Day weekend in 1932, they jacked the house up off the foundation and moved it across the Pine Street Bridge. The problem was it got stuck on the bridge. 
and it was stuck on the bridge for three days. And I, after many years of trying, got a picture of the house stuck on the bridge. And there is the house. The Pengrove Hotel was furious because it was a holiday weekend. Nobody could get to the hotel to eat. And the only way they got the house off the bridge was to take off the porch. They took off the porch, moved the house, and put it on a new foundation, the first house on the right as you cross the bridge. And that house is still there. The porch is now gone again. But that's how the post office got in the middle of town. This is one of our newer displays also. Coal mining was extremely important in the early part of the century. We have many Italians in Grove City because they came from Italy to work in the mines. Here's a little map that shows all the coal mines. Each circle represents a coal mine, so you can see how many coal mines there were in the area. This display was donated by the Randy Volts family in memory of Mrs. Volts's father, James Forrest Dunkerley, who was a coal miner. We have a coal car, we have the coal, we even have the pony pulling the coal out of the mine. And, like all coal mines, we have the canary. And as long as the canary lived and chirped and flapped around, the miners knew they were safe. If the canary died, it was time to get out of the mine. The, the air had, had gone bad. So this is our little coal display. Since coal mining was so important in the town, we felt it was appropriate to have a display here. This is our industrial room. One of the interesting things from our past is that Grove City had a truck company. It was called the Bessemer Truck Company. And this is the original catalog that shows the pictures of the trucks. As you can see, this is fragile. Here's a picture of E.J. Fithian, who was involved in the uh, founding of Cooper Bessemer and the truck company. As far as we know, there is no connection between the Bessemer and this truck company, but this is obviously uh, something of historical significance. People have called in and asked if we have any of the trucks. We do not, but the trucks have been found all over the United States. So it's, it's interesting. They're finding the trucks, they're putting them together, trying to make one truck. And we have one of our members who um, went on the internet and has found a lot of information on the Bessemer trucks. So here's a whole three ring binder showing all the pictures and telling the history of it. So if you're a truck aficionado, this is where you need to come. Also, the original, the first recorded motorhome was built in Grove City. And this is a uh, three reminder on that. It was built in 1917 by E.J. Fithian, who was running for governor of the state of Pennsylvania on the Prohibitionist Party and he had a Winton, which was a great big car. He had the body taken off and a body for a motor home put on it. As I said, everything here has a story. This is a wedding veil. This was from a wedding in 1836, and it was the marriage of David Gilson and Rebecca. Re 
Rebecca Courtney. And they are the grandparents of Weir Kettler. So this veil dates back to 1836. That is not the oldest thing that we have. The oldest thing that we have is actually not on site. It is the Cunningham Wheel, which is at the corner of Greenwood Drive and East Main Street. It is the original main gear from the original Cunningham Mill, which was built in 1799.